Welcome back to Five on Fridays. I'm Brandon Kimbrough, Employee Wellness Coordinator for the City of Columbus. Today, we wanna to shine a spotlight on a group that is working hard to ensure the safety of our pregnant women, new mothers, and babies during their first year here in Central Ohio. That group? is Celebrate One. Last year, more babies died in Franklin County before their first birthday than any other county in the state of Ohio. A trend that Celebrate One has been working to reduce since 2014. Honing in on the social determinants of health, such as nutrition, breastfeeding, sleep safety, car safety, education, and so much more. Today, I had the pleasure of speaking with Phoenicia Hampton, assistant manager to the Connector Corps of Celebrate One. She's gonna to talk to us about the prevalence of infant mortality in our community and how employees and their families can get involved in Celebrate One. Let's get over to the interview. All right, welcome in Phoenicia from Celebrate One. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, how you doing? I am great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We really appreciate you guys taking some time to talk to us about this and kind of give us a little bit of an idea about Celebrate One. With that said, let me start with my first question. I know that the Celebrate One initiative sprung out of the Infant Mortality Task Force in 2014, and the entire idea behind it was to try to get our hands around this public health crisis of infant mortality in our community. Can you talk to us a little bit about Celebrate One's origin and why the program was created and why it still is around today? Absolutely, absolutely. Like you said, it was started in 2014. It came from the Greater Columbus Infant Mortality Task Force, right? They created these eight recommendations based on the numbers they were seeing and the disparities they were seeing between the deaths of African-American babies and white non-Hispanic babies, right? So the Infant Mortality Task Force created a list of eight recommendations that Celebrate One kind of honed in on to decrease the number that they were seeing, not just in the overall infant mortality rate, but also in the disparity between the African-American babies and their Caucasian counterpart. It has been championed by Mayor Ginther even prior to him becoming the mayor. And he has, you know, back Celebrate One from the beginning, he has noted how gravely infant mortality affects Franklin County. And it, he has wanted to impact that number, you know, in a positive way throughout his career as the mayor. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know you guys have been doing great work for a really long time and you've had an extremely high mountain to climb. Tall Absolutely. task, if you will. So yes. I know that there are many different branches of the program. You mentioned, you know, the eight different strategic goals. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the initiatives that you guys do in and around the community and sort of what kind of events do you guys have going on? Absolutely. So we focus on like the key drivers of infant mortality. So all of our programming are, are designed around those key drivers, right? Premature birth, so babies born too small or too soon, sleep-related death, smoking, and the social determinants of health. So we have our community connector core. It's a group of community health workers that go out into the field and meet moms where they are, essentially. They meet them in the public places and spaces. They meet them at corner stores or grocery stores. They meet them at doctor's offices or wherever you can find families, you know, gathering. They meet them there. They do a, a quick intake or assessment of needs, and then they get them connected to services and supports that promote healthy pregnancy outcomes and getting their babies to their first birthday. Along with that, we have our neighborhood integration managers. They go out into the communities and make those higher level partnerships. Mm. Right, They partner with community-based organizations, making sure that they are aware of the uh, infant mortality rates, they're aware of the work that we're doing, and spreading that out to the people that they work with and serve as well. So we, we're kind of all over the place. And then upper, you know, higher level management, you think the director and, you know, those people, they are talking directly to Mayor Ginther and to the people that make these decisions and these changes. People, the legislative people who, you know, create the funding for some of these programs that may not know this is a vital piece of the puzzle here. Like you can't cut funding here because families are dependent on this. Mm. You can't cut funding there because moms and children are dependent on this every day for their survival, right? So we report up, you know, the community health workers, they're telling us what's going on in the neighborhoods from their perspective, from the moms and the family's perspective. We get in that firsthand, whatever troubles they're running into, whatever obstacles they're facing, engaging with these programs and services, they report that right back up to us. And we report it up to our leadership who reports it up to people who make real decisions mm. legislatively that impact these organizations, these the funding that they receive and that sort of thing. So it's all, you know, it's kind of tidy and hand in hand and we're all over the place making sure that every aspect of mom's wellness is covered 
are from housing stability to food stability to health care and everything in between. Yep. Trying to catch all of those key moments and making sure mom and baby have support from start to finish throughout the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know that it just doesn't start when mom's pregnant, right? Mm. We know that those preventative appointments are important. So making sure that even if mom isn't pregnant, that she is still getting the proper health care and nutrition that she needs to sustain herself because a successful pregnancy starts long before conception. Yep. We know that you can't start at a deficit, that you have to be healthy and whole in order to have the best outcome you can for your pregnancy. And that starts long before conception. Makes sense. And, and, you know, kudos to you guys for the great work and for recognizing that you needed to get upstream on these issues and help, like you said, well before conception, because it, it trickles down and, and you can't have a healthy delivery and first year of life without getting upstream first and making sure all of those things are in place. Absolutely. So I'm curious, I know prior to the pandemic, you guys had a ton of in-person events, had boots on the ground, for lack of a better word, in all of these different communities doing work. How has the outreach and the work you you guys are doing changed since the pandemic began what what are you guys seeing how are you able to be in front of people and out in these different communities now with the pandemic Honestly, Brandon, it hasn't changed much at all. We are still boots to the ground. Our team is still out. We know with the pandemic, our moms need us now more than ever. You know, there are places that are closed and they can't get to some of the access, some of the resources and services as readily as they could. And that's creating barriers for mom, you know, for health care, for nutrition, for all of the things we know that affect her pregnancy outcome and getting her baby to their first birthday. So we're out more than ever now. Our community connectors, I mean, we got our masks, we have our vaccinations, you know, we're taking the pro- proper protocol, but our connectors are still boots to the ground, door-to-door canvassing, tabling anywhere that anybody will let them. They are still out there in full force, in full capacity serving moms, just as we did prior to the pandemic. We have gotten a little bit creative since the pandemic in leveraging like social media, you know, in a different media platforms, not just the social medias, but, you know, advertising as far as radio or commercial ads. We've mm-hmm. partnered with Radio One a couple times and done some advertising. We even have a television commercial. So we've leveraged some of these other media outlets, but no, we are still very much in the neighborhoods, in the public, serving moms right at the point of their needs, right at they are down to delivering diapers and wipes and cribs directly to their doorstep. That's incredible and uh, amazing work. I'm not surprised. Everybody I've met from the team is is so incredibly dedicated to the cause and working so hard. So I'm not surprised to hear that the pandemic hasn't slowed you guys down one bit. Not one bit. I know that this episode for us was really important to talk about these things. A goal of the benefits and wellness team was to raise awareness about not only the work you guys do, but also how we can connect the dots between the program that you guys are doing and the city of Columbus employees and their families. So can you kind of talk to us about how an employee can get involved? Someone who's at home watching this or in their office catches this episode, feels moved by the work that's being done. How how do they get connected to you guys? What kind of volunteer opportunities do they have? What, What can they do. Uh, absolutely. So we've kind of reached the end of our event season, right? It's getting cold. But throughout the year, we have quarterly baby shower events where we shower moms and babies with gifts that are necessary, you know, for welcoming a new baby home, right? When we have those quarterly and in different neighborhoods. And we are always welcoming volunteers to uh, help us out at those events. We have our end of the year first birthday event. So mom and baby, you know, we bring together all of those babies that we <laughs> serve throughout the year. And whoever is turning one, nobody turned away, right? We want to celebrate every baby's first birthday. And we do that with a big end of the year celebration that we're always taking volunteers for that as well. And then on the flip side, we also have our Safe Sleep Ambassador training. We want to inform and equip as many people as possible with the information about infant mortality and about sleep-related death and how preventable it is. So we have Safe Sleep Ambassador trainings that are open to the public. And we encourage if you have a group or organization or somebody you know that'd be interested in getting their whole team trained, the more people that are armed with this information, the better off we all are, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you may not have a child of your own, who knows? You may run into somebody at the bus stop or the grocery store that is not, that is not aware of the importance of making sure that their babies are sleeping alone, right? In an empty crib and on their backs. And they can pass that information along. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, everybody is connected in one way or another to an infant or a, a child under 12 months. And as many people as we can equip with our Safe Sleep Ambassador training, we want to. So you can sign your, um, 
employees up for that, right? We have neighborhood coalition meetings that meet monthly in all sides of towns, north, south, east, and west. You all are more than welcome to join us on our neighborhood coalition meeting and see what the neighborhoods are doing and how their work is impacting these infant mortality numbers, see what their organizations are doing to serve families that are in need. And then we have our external referral tool. We have a QR code and a flyer. We have yard signs that we're putting out with our phone number on. You I can love put it. one of those in front of your business or in your front yard to get families passing by connected. And like I said, then we have the external referral tool where families can refer themselves or an agency can refer them. Anybody can refer to Celebrate One and get us the information. If you have a neighbor or a colleague or a niece, a granddaughter that you think could benefit from our services, you can pop in their information real quick. And one of our community health workers will reach out to them within 48 hours and get them connected to whatever services or supports that they need for a successful pregnancy outcome or to get their baby to his or her first birthday and beyond. That is so awesome. I know that you guys are doing great work. There's a lot of pieces in there that I hadn't heard in a long time. And I hope that the employees and, and their families get a chance to take in that information and are moved by it too. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to talk to us about this. Tell us about where we can find this information. You know, you mentioned social media. I know you guys have a website. Tell us about where we can get linked up. We are on social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Celebrate One. We are on Instagram. You can find us at Celebrate One. You can find us at the city's website celebrate1.info. And we also have a general intake number, 614-570-3592, where you can also self-refer anybody who is or who will benefit from the services of Celebrate One. That's awesome. I'm so excited that we get to talk about this and you guys are able to share all of this information with us. Phoenicia, thank you so much for your time today. Very, very Absolutely. grateful. Continue the great work. Keep up the good fight, if you will. I'm just so proud that the city represents our young families and, and our young babies in these communities with this program and the work you guys do. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Um, any opportunity that we have to share what Celebrate One is doing that will potentially lead us to more and more families that are in need of our services and may not know what we do, we're happy to share. So thank you for having us. Of course. Thank you. Thanks again to Phoenicia for coming on the show, giving us her time, and educating us about what Celebrate One is up to. And thanks again to the Celebrate One team for all the great work that they do in our community. If you want to learn more about the program or how to get involved, visit CelebrateOne.info or call them at 614-570-3592. And of course, their website is linked down in the description. That's going to do it for today's episode. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all the new content that we put out. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week.